Good morning, everybody. Um, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak here today. It's a great privilege to be able to speak. So I'm going to tell you about identifying new treatments for the inhibition of cholangiocarcinoma cell growth. I'll just get my clicker organized. So at this conference, I don't really have to explain the importance of identifying new treatments for uh, cholangiocarcinoma patients. So I'll just tell you uh, a little bit about the different approaches that we're taking in my laboratory. Um, as Izzy has explained, we're looking at immune therapy in that we're looking at the signaling between um, T cell subsets and the tumor epithelium that promotes the survival and the proliferation of the uh, tumor. And in particular, we're looking at the Th17 subset and how it can promote um, the uh, survival of tumor cells. Also in my lab, we're also taking the approach that um, of looking at localized electric field therapy. And we're doing that with Dr. Uh, Frankie Rawson. And uh, this is a, a therapy uh, whereby we can use it localized electric fields to specifically target dividing tumor cells. And then finally, of course, we're looking at targeted therapies and combination therapies to block the aberrant signaling and promote apoptosis. And we're doing this with Professor Gaston. And um, I'll tell you about this last uh, approach today. So, the development of cholangiocarcinoma, of course, is highly complex. It's initiated by liver and bile duct wounding, um, whether that be by toxins, toxic metabolites, or infections. And this wounding is accompanied by wound healing and often accompanied by chronic inflammation that causes the release of cytokines, ligands, reactive oxidative species that promote the proliferation of bile duct epithelium and uh, cause DNA damage, that causes mutation, changes in gene expression, and then, the, of course, the dysregulation of um, embryonic signaling pathways, such as the Winter Notch signaling pathways. And then this thereby promotes further tumor proliferation and um, the release of cytokines and further growth factors that further cause stromal activation alteration of bile acids and bile acid flow. And all these factors together promote uh, tumor genesis towards invasion. And although most many of these molecules uh, that are important in these processes have been identified, in our lab, we've been looking at some new molecules um, that are important for one or more uh, parts of this um, developmental pathway. And we have identified a protein known as PRH, uh, to be uh, important in this process. Uh, PRH is found to be low in normal bile duct cells, but is highly expressed uh, in uh, tumor cells. And I'll um, go on to tell you in this talk a little bit more about the PRH protein and how we know that it's important in tumor genesis. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about how having high PRH we believe um, exposes tumor cells to certain vulnerabilities that we can exploit. And then finally, I'm gonna tell you a little bit, uh, change track and tell you a bit about screening a repurposed drug library um, for combination therapies. So what is PRH? Well, PRH stands for proline-rich homidomain protein, and this is a transcription factor that regulates both liver and bile duct formation. Um, the important things that I want to tell you about PRH is that it's a sequence-specific DNA binding protein. Um, it binds to DNA uh, using a region known as the homeodomain. And on this overhead, I've just shown how it binds to DNA. It's a, a cartoon of how it binds to DNA. The interesting thing about this particular protein that we've studied for quite a while is that it's a homopolymer, and that's very unusual for a transcription factor. And in my laboratory, we've shown over a number of years that it can bind to DNA as a homopolymer. And it can also, it's a very promiscuous protein, it can bind to multiple partner proteins. And we've proposed over a number of years that um, the PRH protein can 
integrate, because of its ability to bind as a homopolymer and bind to partner proteins, growth regulatory cues, cell proliferative cues, and developmental cues to bring about changes in gene expression. Um, as I said before, it's important for liver and bile duct formation, and it can influence the expression and the activity of multiple lineage-specific transcription factors, both the hepatic and the uh, biliary lineage transcription factors. And it's also important in liver regeneration. So what makes us think it's important is that in um, a tumor microarray, we've noticed that it's very highly expressed in cholangiocarcinoma samples, but it's not expressed. You don't see any brown staining in the uh, border bile duct cells. In the TCGA uh, database, it's very highly expressed in cholangiocarcinoma patients at mRNA level, and this is independently of copy number variation. And I guess the most direct uh, evidence is that when we carried out xenograft experiments, the um, tumor cells grew very well as xenografts in mice, whereas um, tumor cells depleted of PRH grow very poorly, they form very tiny tumors, and probably most importantly in our experiments, there was a much reduced capacity of tumor initiation. So we published this work a few years ago, um, and we were able to show that uh, when we perturbed PRH levels in cells, that uh, PRH is able to regulate the proliferation of the cells. If you increase PRH levels in cells, then you have much greater EDU incorporation, which um, reflects cell proliferation. If you, however, reduce the amount of PRH in cells, you reduce cell proliferation. Um, however, we didn't see changes in annexin or PI staining of cells, which are markers for uh, apoptosis. So we saw no changes in cell death. We only saw massive changes in the proliferative nature of, of the cells. So what we did was then try to understand exactly how does PRH regulate these cells. And to do that, we did a lot of transcriptomics. We did um, RNA sequencing uh, genome-wide. We also did chip sequencing. And um, it, we found, of course, that it regulates multiple uh, signaling pathways. But today, I'm just going to focus on this particular um, data, which is that we found that PRH can directly regulate the cell cycle. It can regulate the expression of two genes, CDKN1B and CDKN2B. Um, and uh, you can see here that RNA sequencing experiments show that in the presence of high levels of PRH, the amount of RNA is reduced, and PRH can bind quite close to those genes to regulate the expression. And the importance of the fact that it can regulate the cell cycle, uh, um, these particular genes, is that these genes are, um, encode the P27 and P15 cell cycle inhibitors. So by reducing the expression of these genes, the cells can progress through the cell cycle much more rapidly. In addition, PRH can also indirectly regulate the cell cycle. It can uh, regulate the Wnt signaling pathway through multiple genes in that pathway. It can also regulate the Notch signaling pathway through multiple genes in that pathway. And importantly, PRH and Notch3 um, are in a positive feed-forward loop. And I don't have time to show you all the evidence for that. But these two proteins work together, and they cooperate to regulate the expression of cyclin D2. And this also is very important for activating the cell cycle. And cyclin D2 is a partner for CD4-6 uh, kinase. And because PRH can regulate the cell cycle through multiple mechanisms, because it can uh, repress specific cell cycle inhibitors that can repress the activity of this particular kinase and also turn on the binding partner for this particular kinase, we thought that that therefore would um, imply that cells that had very high levels of PRH would be very rapidly progressing through the cell cycle and 
particularly activating the expression of this particular kinase. So we wondered whether um, PRH high cells would be particularly sensitive to cell cycle inhibitors. Um, and to address that question, we decided to look at palbociclib. Um, and we decided to look at this particular drug because it's a nice approved drug that's used in, currently in patients as a monotherapy for metastatic ER positive breast cancer. And um, it's potently able to uh, inhibit CD4-6 kinase and block phosphorylation of RB and therefore block the cell cycle. And most importantly, because it has reasonable side effects and uh, is well tolerated in patients. So we thought we could more rapidly progress our work. So what happens when we try and treat cholangiocarcinoma cell lines with palbociclib is that we saw that, yes, we had very nice dose response curves for palbociclib, uh, whether these uh, the, the cell lines are of European origin or whether they were derived from patients who had a bile duct, a liver fluke infection, regardless of the etiology of the disease, um, the palbociclib works very well. But more importantly, what happens when you have PRH high cell lines? Well, we experimentally further increased uh, PRH in all the cell lines, and in each case, um, having extra PRH in those cells made those cells more sensitive to palbociclib. So then we were interested to understand, or I should just say probably as importantly, if you reduce the amount of PRH in those cells, you also decrease the sensitivity to palbociclib. So we were under, interested to understand how does palbociclib work in these cells? Is it only by regulating the cell cycle? And we can see when we carry out EDU incorporation experiments that palbociclib, yes, it's reducing proliferation, but when we further increase the amount of PRH in cells, the effect of palbociclib is hugely apparent. It's, uh, it, it looks much more effective in the presence of PRH because, of course, PRH is increasing the cell cycle. Perhaps more interestingly, we saw that palbociclib was also, however, increasing caspase 3 activity in cells. And caspase 3 is the um, uh, protease that uh, enacts apoptosis finally. Um, and we can see that PR, uh, palbociclib increases caspase 3 activity. But in the presence of PRH, again, the caspase 3 activity is also increased. So um, PRH seems to be increasing um, the proaptotic activity of, um, of um, palbociclib. And in fact, we see this effect of high PRH in every cell line that we look at. And this is, I'm only showing you the effect on caspase 3 activity. It also increases the sensitivity to palbociclib in terms of the cell cycle and inhibition of proliferation in all cases. So just to make sure that when we were looking at caspase 3 activity, we're actually are looking at apoptosis. We also looked at um, annexin staining and PI staining to to directly measure apoptosis. And we see that palbociclib, um, of course, does increase apoptosis, as we'd expect. But in the presence of PRH, um, the, uh, the apoptotic activity is also increased. So we would argue that this means that PRH high cells would be particularly sensitive and more vulnerable to the activity of palbociclib than most other cells. So that's great, and we're interested in understanding the molecular mechanism by which PRH is now able to promote the activity of palbociclib in these different tumor cell lines. However, um, we were interested also to determine whether there are combinations that can work better with palbociclib because of two reasons. In the literature, in other tumor lines, palbociclib does work very well with other chemotherapies. And secondly, because there had been a very, very small trial, a basket trial, with just 10 bile duct uh, patients with advanced biliary tract uh, cancer, which had said that um, palbociclib might not be a great monotherapy for cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, 
And because of that, we thought that it would be perhaps much more useful to try and determine if there were drugs that would increase the effect of palbociclib in uh, cholangiocarcinoma patients. Um, so to try and address that question, we decided to uh, look at a drug repurposing library because we wanted to try and find a, um, a uh, drugs that are low cost and are have or that are already known to be effective in men for other reasons and highly well tolerated um, to treat other conditions. So what we did is we screened a drug repurposing library that's off patent with a, a colleague at the University of Birmingham. And we looked at um, three different cell lines and repeated the experiment multiple times and found a, a whole library, a, a large number of hits, well, at least eight hits, that uh, were effective in reducing cell growth uh, of cholangiocarcinoma cell lines. And um, we have followed up many of those hits. I'm just going to tell you about one of them today. Um, it's called Drug 56. It's able to reduce cell viability. It is able to reduce proliferation. It is able to increase apoptotic activity, much like palbociclib. Um, and most importantly, the two drugs, palbociclib and this uh, drug together, when we carry out drug combination experiments are able to um, better uh, reduce the proliferation and the survival of, um, of tumor cells. Um, here you can see um, palbociclib alone. Here you can see drug 56 alone, but in, in combination, the effect is much more potent. And um, for those of you who are interested to know whether this is an additive effect or a synergistic effect, when we've done um, combination index experiments, it's less than one, which um, is uh, indicative of being a synergistic effect. But whether it be additive or um, um, synergistic, uh, we think this is a, a good way to um, further um, understand or, or um, investigate new treatments for uh, patients with cholangiocarcinoma because we hope that these two different drugs, um, uh, which are both known to have reasonable side effects in, in man could be more uh, quickly combined together and translated to patients um, rapidly. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, at present, we are trying to understand the molecular mechanisms uh, by which PRH is able to sensitize cholangiocarcinoma cells to palbociclib um, in terms of uh, its uh, ability to reduce proliferation and also in its ability to increase um, um, apoptosis. Um, and we think, therefore, that PRH expression could actually be quite a good marker for sensitivity to palbociclib. And um, I've finally shown you that it can synergize with other compounds uh, for treatment, and we would like to carry out this investigation further. And finally, I'd just like to thank all my collaborators um, that I've worked with over the years, um, and particularly point out and thank my uh, student, Katrina Lee, who carried out most of this work, um, and just mention my new student, Grace Martin, who's taking on uh, many of these experiments and who's currently uh, part funded by the AMMF and the University of Nottingham. Thank you very much.